Good morning, everyone. It's Sarah here. Thank you for joining me at church today for the third part of our series on Jesus and emotions or feelings. Can you remember which emotions we've done so far? Have a quick chat with your family. Did you remember that the first emotion was Jesus and joy? Rachel and Lucy helped us think about how joyful Jesus felt when people believed in him and how we can have deep joy down in our hearts through the Holy Spirit when we trust in God. What about the second one? That's right, last week, Louisa and Elena told us about Jesus and anger. How Jesus showed righteous anger when people tried to stop the little children from coming up to him. And how we can sometimes be angry when we hear about unfair things that are happening. And how we can pray about these things and try to help. Now, this week, we are thinking about another emotion or feeling that Jesus showed. Can you guess what it might be? Before I tell you, let's sing our first song together. Isaac on the altar, he pulled the knife, but God, he never falters, faithful to his promise, he would provide a substitute ram for the sacrifice. Now, he gave commandments so we could see his holiness and our desperate need, but then there were so many temporary sacrifices, none of them were perfect, no, but Christ was the perfect one, so we can have the perfect It's one story of the 
Great singing, everyone. Now, here's a clue to our next emotion. Yes, it's sadness. Are you ever sad? Do you ever cry? I know I do, and I'm sure you do too. Talk with your family now about some things that make you sad. Or what was the last thing that made you cry? Did you know that Jesus cried? It's true. The Bible tells us at least three things that made Jesus cry. Number one, the Bible tells us that Jesus cried when he prayed for other people. It says, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered up prayers and pleadings with loud cry and with tears. That's from Hebrews. Secondly, the Bible also tells us that Jesus cried when he saw people who were missing out on what God wanted for them. Luke tells us that as Jesus came towards Jerusalem, the capital city, when he saw the city, he wept tears over it. He cried and he said, I wish that even today you would find the way of peace. But now it's too late and peace is hidden from you. And the third time, the Bible tells us that Jesus cried when his friends were hurting. It's from John chapter 11. You could try and find it in your Bible. That's John chapter 11. Now this chapter has the very smallest verse in the whole Bible in it. It's in verse 35. And it simply says, Jesus wept. That's another word for Jesus cried. Here's Louisa to tell us the story of what made Jesus cry. Our story today is the story of Lazarus and it's taken from John 11 verses 1 to 44. One day Lazarus became ill. As he grew worse and worse, Martha and Mary, his sisters, were beside themselves with worry. The doctor could do nothing to help and shook his head sadly. Jesus could make him better, Mary said. Yes, let's send a message for him to come and help, Martha suggested. Jesus was in the north of the country once more, out of the way of the rulers of Judea, who had tried to stone him. But someone in the village would go for him. Tell Jesus that his dear friend is ill, the sisters instructed the messenger. Jesus was very fond of Lazarus and of Martha and Mary too. The disciples could see the concern on his face when he heard the bad news. But he told them, Death will not be the end for Lazarus. This illness is going to bring glory to God and to his son. Then, to their surprise, he went on with his work of healing and teaching, just where they were. It was two whole days later that Jesus said, We're going to Bethany now. It will be dangerous, one of them reminded him. Remember what happened last time we were in Judea? If the master is prepared to risk death, then we'll stick by him and die too if need be, Thomas said bravely. On the way, Jesus said, Lazarus has fallen asleep. That's a good sign, they replied. It must mean he's going to get better. But Jesus explained, When I said that he's asleep, I mean that he has died. Death is like a sleep and I'm going to wake him up. I'm glad about the delay for your sakes. What I'm going to do will help you all to believe in me. None of them quite understood what Jesus meant, or what he would do when they arrived in Bethany. They would have to wait a little longer to find out. By the time that Jesus and his disciples arrived on the outskirts of Bethany, Lazarus had been dead and buried four whole days. The house was still full of friends who had come to comfort Martha and Mary and mourn with them. When news arrived that Jesus was near, Martha rushed out to meet him. I'm sure Lazarus would not have died if you had been here, she told Jesus. Listen, Martha, Jesus said, I am resurrection and life. 
The person who believes in me will live again, even though he has died. Do you believe that? I believe that you are God's son, the promised Messiah, Martha replied fervently. When Martha left Jesus, she ran to tell Mary that he wanted to see her too. Mary set out from the house, and a whole crowd of Jews followed her, thinking that she was going to her brother's grave to weep. When Jesus saw Mary in tears and all the other Jews weeping, he cried too. Although he was going to bring Lazarus back to life, he was deeply grieved at the sadness that death brings to everyone. Show me his grave, Jesus said, and they made their way to the rock tomb together. Take away the stone that blocks the entrance, Jesus ordered. When that was done, Jesus prayed aloud. Thank you, Father, for always hearing my prayers, he said. May everyone see now that you have sent me to give life. Then Jesus called out loudly, Lazarus, come out. A tense silence followed. Everyone held their breath. Then there was the soft sound of shuffling feet, and Lazarus, muffled and bound from head to foot in white grave wrappings, stumbled across the threshold of the cave into the warm sunshine. Take off those grave clothes, Jesus said. Willing hands quickly unwound the long strips of linen so that his face was uncovered and his hands and feet free. Lazarus stretched his limbs, then strode across to his sisters, his face glowing with life and health. They all began to laugh and cry at once and to hug and kiss each other. What an amazing story that is. I'm going to put up a few questions for you to chat about with your family now. Have a think about what your answers might be. I hope you had a great chat. I'm sure you talked about how Jesus felt sadness and he cried because his friend had died and because he could see how much his other friends were hurting in their hearts because their brother had died. And we saw, didn't we, that when Jesus felt sad, he prayed. Jesus talks to his father in heaven and then he was able to show his amazing power to raise his friend from death. It's good to remember that whenever we feel sad, we can talk to God about it. Did you know that in Psalm 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord, that's God, is close to the brokenhearted. Or in other words, if your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. Listen to that again. If your heart is broken, 
you'll find God right there. How do you feel when you read those words or listen to them? Have a little chat with your family. It really is comforting to know that God is right there with us when we're sad, isn't it? God knows how it feels. And it's also amazing to remember that Jesus had the power to raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. And right at the very end of the Bible, it tells us that in Jesus' kingdom, God will wipe away every tear. There will be no more death or sadness or crying or pain. Isn't that wonderful? Let's finish by praying to God now. Take a moment to think of something that makes you sad. And let's pray. Thank you, God, that you promise to be right there with us when we are feeling sad. We pray for anyone we know who is feeling sad at the moment, that they would feel you close to them and that you would comfort them. We praise you, Jesus, that you are the death smasher, that one day in your amazing kingdom, there will be no more sadness or death. Amen. Thank you for being here today. We'd love to see you again next week for the last in the series. I wonder what emotion we'll learn about then. Let's finish with another song. Bye. Jesus, when you died, it looked like a failure. All your friends had gone, they thought it was over. Jesus, when you died, you did not deserve it. This was all God's plan. Trust in his words, knowing you fulfilled them.